So here are 15 super useful tips and tricks for your Samsung Galaxy. Number 1. Taking screenshots is incredibly easy. Just swipe your palm over the screen and the phone will take a screenshot. There you go. Now if this method does not work on your phone, you might have to enable it by going into the settings and then scroll down to advanced features and inside advanced features tap on motion and gestures. Here, enable palm swipe to capture which lets you take a screenshot by swiping your palm over the screen. You can also add important notes directly to your home screen. As you can see, we've got one right over here. And you can do this with the notes that have been created with the Samsung Notes application which is the default notes application on pretty much every Samsung Galaxy. Okay, so the way you can add a note right here is by long pressing the home screen and then tapping on widgets. Here look for Samsung Notes and then expand this menu. From here add the single note widget. So let's add this. And finally pick the note that you want to add to the home screen. And that is it. Now we have got a note on the home screen. Now to make the note transparent all you have to do is long press the widget. Then go to its setting, switch off match with dark mode and then tweak the transparency from over here. And that's it. I think the transparent note looks a little bit better because yeah, you can see the wallpaper. But yeah, this is how you add a note from the Samsung Notes app on your home screen. Now our home screen looks pretty crowded. Lots of widgets on a single page. So to free up some space, what we can do is long press on a widget and then drag it on top of another one. And you will see both of them will combine, giving us two widgets inside of a single one. Awesome feature, right? And you can even edit the stack by long pressing and then edit stack. From here, you can remove or add more widgets to the stack. And just so you know, this only works with similar sized widgets, so you can't just drag and drop a bigger widget into a smaller one. The size has to be the same for this to work. For example, we can combine these two because they are of similar size. Sometimes you might accidentally end up moving the icons or the widgets on the home screen, especially if you've got clumsy hands like mine. This actually happens a lot to me and it is annoying. So if you want to prevent this from happening, pinch in on the home screen and go to the home screen settings and turn this feature on which says lock home screen layout and this will lock the widgets and the icons in their place. Very useful if you have spent a lot of time creating the perfect home screen. Oh and by the way, I've got a home screen tutorial on the channel so if you want to create a home screen which is similar to mine, you might want to check this video out. I will put the link in this video's description. You might have a dating or a banking application that you might want to hide from the home screen and the app drawer. It's actually very simple to hide apps. So once again we are going back into the home screen settings. Now here you will find an option hide apps on home and apps screen. And from this list just pick whichever apps you want to hide. So we have hidden snapchat and you will see that it also disappears from the home screen as well as the app drawer. Now obviously this is not password protected, anyone who knows their way around Samsung phones can find out. But still, I feel that this is a great privacy tool. Samsung Galaxies have a feature called the pop-up view which lets you run apps in a little window. Now the main advantage of this is that it lets you run multiple apps at the same time. So you can continue watching YouTube and do other stuff on your phone at the same time. And you can use gestures to make apps run in the pop-up view. Let me show you how it works. So whenever you are in an app, swipe in from the top right corner of the screen. And there you go. This makes the app run in this pop-up view mode. And you can move the window around and resize it as per your liking. Now there are actually two modes. So this is the pop-up view and the other one is split view. So first let's make the app full screen back again. There you go. So to switch to the split view mode, all you gotta do is swipe in with two fingers from the bottom of the screen and that is going to activate the split view mode. And from this list you can select the second app which you wanna run in the split view mode. So there you go. Amazing right? Now these two features are disabled by default so you will have to turn them on. So we will go to settings and then scroll down to advanced features. 
inside the advanced features tap on labs and enable swipe for pop-up view and swipe for split screen and while you're in this menu also enable multi window for all apps this will make every app on the phone compatible with the pop-up and the split view mode now viewing your samsung galaxy's screen on a big tv can come in very handy to watch photos and videos with your family and friends and it is very easy to set up all you have to do is drop down the notification panel and look for something called smart view here it is now tap on it and you should automatically see your tv listed in this menu this is an lg tv so we are going to tap here and it should start mirroring the screen of the phone onto the tv and if you get any prompts just tap on accept so yeah there you go now to rotate the screen in landscape first rotate your phone and tap on this icon and you will see that changes the screen to landscape mode and it fills the entire screen of the tv now if your tv has black borders on the top and bottom then you will need to change the aspect ratio on your phone let me show you how to do that so open the smart view panel by tapping here and then select change aspect ratio scroll down and select full screen on the connected device so this changes the aspect ratio to match the tv and now you will be able to see everything in full screen without the black borders now here's the awesome part if you've got a samsung tv then smart view allows you to watch tv on your samsung smartphone so it is like reverse screen mirroring let me show you how to set this up so here's my Samsung QLED TV. It's about three years old, so it's not something that's brand new. Anyways, on your phone, drop down the notification panel and once again, go back to Smart View. And this time, select Other Device to Phone. And once again, you should see your TV listed over here. Tap on it and the phone will connect to the TV and show you whatever the TV is receiving through its HDMI port. And there you go. So the thing is, I've got my PC plugged in, so we are seeing the screen of the PC on the phone. But if you've got a cable box plugged in into the HDMI port, then you will be able to watch live TV on your Samsung smartphone. Awesome, right? Did you guys know that if you tap on the clock that appears on the lock screen, that opens up the lock screen widgets. So you've got the music player, weather, calendar, alarms, digital well-being, and the sound recorder widget that lets you record audio directly from the lock screen without unlocking your phone. How awesome is that? And if you want to customize these, tap on settings and you can turn them on and off individually and even change their order according to your liking. Now the best part is that you can also view these widgets on the always on display. So make sure always on display is turned on, in our case it is. So on the always on display, double tap on the clock and swipe down. And this opens up the always on display widgets. It is the same thing as the lock screen widgets, but these appear on the always on display. And I think these are extremely useful. You can also customize the items on the lock screen such as the clock, notifications and the wallpaper right from the lock screen itself. All you have to do is long press on the lock screen, unlock and you will see that the phone gives you a live preview of how the lock screen looks. Here you can tap on individual items to change how they look like and customize them. One thing that I do recommend is increasing the size of the clock because the larger digits are easier to read. Secondly, you can also change the font of the clock if you wish to. Now, this also changes the font of the clock on the always on display. So, as you can see, the clock on the always on display has the same font as the clock on the lock screen. Lastly, you can also add your contact information at the bottom of the screen. And there's also an option that allows you to apply a filter to the wallpaper directly from the lock screen itself. And speaking of wallpaper, if you want to change it, just tap on wallpapers and you can see all of them are properly categorized. So yeah, that's how you customize the items on the lock screen. Now I've seen many people switch off their Bluetooth headset just to get the audio back to the phone's internal speaker. Well, you don't have to go through the hassle of disconnecting the Bluetooth headset 
just to switch the audio back to the phone's internal speaker. Instead, when you've got a Bluetooth headset connected, drop down the notification panel and tap on media output. And from this list, select this phone. This switches the audio back to the phone's internal speaker, but it will leave the Bluetooth headset connected to the phone. You can see it is still connected. And if we play something, the audio is going to play back through the phone's internal speaker. Now to switch the audio back to the headset, go back into the media output and select the Bluetooth headset. So there you go. So this little tip is going to save you a lot of hassle and time. Now check this out, you can actually connect a second Bluetooth headset to your phone and by doing this, you and your friend can listen to music together. So this one is already connected to the phone, so now we will connect this headset as well. Oh and here's a tip for you guys, if your headset has NFC, switch it on and tap the back of your phone to the NFC area of the headset. It's gonna have this NFC logo on it and this is gonna pair the headset to your phone. Okay, so now we have both of the headsets connected and we can verify that through the Bluetooth panel. To play the same music on both of these, go back to the media output panel and just enable the audio output for both of these. And that is it. Now, whenever you play a song, it's gonna play back on both of these headsets. Now speaking of audio, did you know that you can play a video's audio in the background with the screen switched off? So you can hear the video's audio playing back in the background but the screen is off. So this can be very useful at times. Let me show you how to enable this feature. Okay, so what you want to do is go to your gallery and open a video. Once you have a video selected, tap on these three dots and then select open in video player. Yes, there is a dedicated video player on these phones. Anyways, here tap on these three dots on the top right corner and go to settings. And here enable background play. And that's it. You can now play a video and put your phone to sleep and the video's audio will continue playing back in the background. This can be super useful while listening to video podcasts. Okay, so you give your phone to someone, maybe to make a phone call or to browse the web. But instead, they open your gallery and start browsing your personal photos or they also might open your messaging app and check out all your private chats. Yikes. Well, to prevent this from happening, there is a feature on the phone that you can enable and this will prevent your naughty friends from accessing the gallery and the apps on your phone. So for example, your friend wants to browse the web. So before you hand over your phone to them, open the Recents menu and then tap on the app icon. From this list, select Pin this app. And this will pin the app on the screen and they will not be able to access anything else on your Galaxy smartphone. So you can see nothing happens even if I press the Home or the Back button. So this is a really powerful privacy feature. Now to unpin the app, press and hold the Recents and the Back button together. And now to access the phone, you will have to enter your biometrics. So there you go, now everything is back to normal. Now this feature is disabled by default, so you will have to enable that by going into the settings and then security and privacy. Inside, scroll down to other security settings and finally inside here, enable pin windows. Alright, so I guess that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and if you have enjoyed, make sure to mash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you find these kind of videos informative. And I will see you guys next week. Tech Guy Charlie signing off.